Welcome to our Hong Kong Brief program. Today, we're diving into some intriguing stories that are shaping the city. First up, Hong Kong is regaining its sparkle as top mainland officials signal a renewed commitment to enhancing the city's role as an international financial hub. With significant capital inflows and a focus on market reforms, it looks like Hong Kong is ready to reclaim its status amidst global challenges. In a more somber turn of events, police are investigating the unsettling discovery of a female skeleton in A.P. Lei Chow Park. This shocking find adds to a string of similar incidents in the city, and the Western District Crime Squad is on the case. We'll keep you updated as more details emerge from this ongoing investigation. Lastly, Chief Executive John Lee has urged Hong Kong to remain calm in the face of Donald Trump's potential return to power. With concerns about foreign trade relations and their impact on local stability, Lee emphasizes the importance of resilience. As Hong Kong navigates these political waters, it's clear that the city is determined to maintain its strength and economic potential. Please continue to watch for detailed coverage on these stories. Reuters Breaking Views reports on a significant shift in Hong Kong's financial landscape as mainland officials, including Vice Premier He Lefeng, openly support the city's role as an international financial hub. This marks a departure from previous years where such support was less visible. He Lefeng's presence at a recent conference, alongside prominent CEOs, signals Beijing's intention to leverage Hong Kong to access global capital amidst rising U.S. tariffs. The government has hinted at potential market reforms, which could reinvigorate the finance sector, as evidenced by a surge in IPOs and substantial stock offerings from major mainland companies. Such developments suggest that Hong Kong is on a path to restore its financial prestige, despite ongoing political tensions and legal actions against democracy advocates. South China Morning Post highlights a grim discovery in southern Hong Kong where police are investigating the remains of a female skeleton found near a basketball court in A.P. Lei Chow Park. This incident adds to a troubling history of skeletons being uncovered in various locations around the city, including previous cases involving human remains found in the sea and on hillsides. The ongoing investigations reflect a pattern of eerie discoveries that have plagued the region, raising concerns about public safety and the unresolved cases of missing persons. As authorities work to identify the remains, the community is left grappling with the unsettling reality of such findings in their neighborhoods. South China Morning Post also discusses the challenges Hong Kong faces in maintaining its stability amid potential geopolitical tensions, particularly with the anticipated re-election of Donald Trump. Chief Executive John Lee Kachiu emphasizes that trade relations should not interfere with local affairs, especially in light of Trump's provocative statements regarding Hong Kong's political prisoners. The city has already endured significant reputational damage due to past unrest and sanctions from the U.S. However, recent efforts to promote Hong Kong as a global business hub have begun to bear fruit, with the city regaining its status as Asia's top financial center. The letter argues that the best course of action for Hong Kong is to remain focused on its own achievements and avoid being drawn into international conflicts, ensuring its continued prosperity and stability in a challenging global environment. South China Morning Post highlights the culinary journey of Britta Butler, a designer who finds solace in Hong Kong's food scene reminiscent of her American roots. Raised in the USA with a diverse culinary background, Butler shares her favorite dining spots, including Osteria Marzia, known for its coastal Italian dishes, and Zuma, which offers a vibrant brunch experience. She expresses her love for ice cream in Cookie Co., where the ice cream sandwiches evoke memories of home, featuring delectable chocolate chip cookies and Hokkaido vanilla ice cream. Butler's passion for design is evident in her work at Orchard, where she crafted the interior, and she also recommends the exquisite dining experience at Caprice, emphasizing the city's vibrant culinary landscape. 
In the Panda Watch segment of the South China Morning Post, excitement builds as Hong Kong's twin panda cubs approach their 100th day of life, coinciding with the public reappearance of their father, Lulu. Ocean Park is gearing up for celebrations, highlighting the potential for a panda economy that could capitalize on the popularity of these adorable creatures. Authorities are exploring ways to develop panda-themed intellectual properties, inspired by successful examples from zoos worldwide. The success of Chengdu's giant pandas, particularly He Hua, who has become an internet sensation, illustrates the lucrative potential of leveraging panda popularity for merchandise and tourism. Nikkei Asia reports on the cautious stance of long-term investors towards China's economic stimulus measures. Despite a surge in stock market activity, figures like Goldman Sachs CEO David Solomon and PAG's Chris Gradle indicate that many investors remain on the sidelines, awaiting sustained economic support from Beijing. Gradle emphasizes the need for a stable recovery, as past performance has left many investors wary. The hesitance is particularly pronounced among Western investors due to geopolitical concerns, while Middle Eastern investors are more optimistic and actively investing in China. Overall, the report suggests a critical need for transparency and consistent economic signals to attract long-term investment back into China's markets. South China Morning Post reports that Hong Kong stocks are on an upward trajectory as investors eagerly await anticipated stimulus measures from Beijing. The Hang Seng Index showed a modest increase of 0.2 percent, reaching 19,642.83, marking a weekly gain of 1.1 percent. Meanwhile, the Hang Seng Tech Index rose by 0.7 percent, contrasting with declines in mainland benchmarks such as the CSI 300 and the Shanghai Composite Index, both down by 0.3 percent. Notable performances included BYD Electronic, which surged by 7.6 percent, and Sunny Optical, which saw a 7.4 percent increase. However, Baidu faced a significant drop of 8.6% due to disappointing revenue figures, marking the largest decline in over two years. In a separate article from South China Morning Post, former media mogul Jimmy Lai Ching continues to testify in his high-profile national security trial, where he faces charges related to collusion with foreign forces and conspiracy to publish seditious materials. Lai maintains his innocence, asserting that his writings for the now-defunct Apple Daily were not intended to incite hatred against authorities. He disclosed that he had received sensitive information regarding U.S. sanctions on Hong Kong officials but denied orchestrating a sanctions list. The court proceedings have revealed Lai's perspective on the political climate during the 2019 protests, where he argued that while the protest actions were damaging, they did not result in physical harm to individuals. The trial is set to continue with extensive questioning from his defense team. Also covered by South China Morning Post, Leon Jones is embracing his newfound responsibility as a pivotal player in Hong Kong's national football team under coach Ashley Westwood. Just five months after his international debut, Jones has secured a crucial role as the sole conventional centre-back, demonstrating both skill and leadership on the field. Despite a challenging start in a World Cup qualifier against Iran, where he made critical errors, Jones reflects positively on his debut experience and is determined to learn and grow. He has a strong connection to Hong Kong, with family supporting him from the stands, and he expresses ambition for his football career, aiming to perform at the highest levels in Asia or beyond. With upcoming matches against Mongolia and Chinese Taipei, Jones is focused on building confidence and success for the team. South China Morning Post, renowned South Korean actor Kim Woo Bin has become the face of Jaeger Lukolter, embodying the elegance and sophistication of the luxury watch brand. Recently, he showcased the Reverso Tribute Chronograph, a stunning timepiece that marries classic Swiss design with innovative mechanics. 
this watch, with its unique reversible case originally designed for polo players, features a sleek gray-blue sunray dial on one side and an intricate openwork display on the other, highlighting the new manufacturer caliber 860. Additionally, Kim has been seen wearing the 2023 Polaris Chronograph, a modern homage to the 1960s Memovox Diver's watch, featuring a 42mm steel case and available in striking deep blue or lively grey dials, perfect for the stylish individual. South China Morning Post, as the holiday season approaches, Graf's I Wish campaign dazzles with an exquisite collection of jewelry, showcasing the brand's legacy of exceptional craftsmanship and rare gemstones. Founded by Lawrence Graf, this British jeweler has become synonymous with luxury, featuring iconic pieces like the 38.88 carat fancy intense yellow oval diamond ring surrounded by brilliant white diamonds. The campaign highlights not only stunning designs but also the artistry involved in creating modern heirlooms, with each piece crafted to be cherished for generations. Model Andrea Diaconu brings the collection to life, embodying the spirit of Graf's commitment to perfection and innovation in jewelry design. South China Morning Post in response to the challenges faced by supply chains connecting Asia and Europe, a new air freight route has been launched by Cargo Point, connecting China to Europe via Tashkent, Uzbekistan. This strategic corridor aims to streamline cargo movement, providing businesses with faster transit times and reliable capacity amidst geopolitical tensions and rising transportation costs. As air cargo demand continues to grow, Tashkent is emerging as a major transit hub, revitalizing the ancient Silk Road pathways for modern trade. With partnerships and infrastructure investments, Cargo Point is paving the way for efficient logistics, ensuring that Uzbekistan plays a pivotal role in the global supply chain landscape, promising a bright future for trade along this new Silk Road. South China Morning Post highlights the potential impact of Donald Trump's return to the White House on immigration policies, particularly concerning H-1B visas. Trump's previous administration saw a significant increase in denial rates for these visas, which are crucial for skilled professionals, especially recent graduates from American colleges. The article suggests that as the U.S. tightens its immigration controls, Hong Kong could emerge as an attractive alternative for these graduates, particularly in fields like computer science and engineering. Chief Executive John Lee Kachu's government is actively working to enhance talent attraction schemes, but questions remain about Hong Kong's readiness to welcome and integrate these professionals, especially given the political climate and perceptions of living conditions. In another article, the South China Morning Post reports on new proposals from Hong Kong authorities aimed at improving living conditions for the elderly in light of the city's aging population. The Development Bureau has suggested mandatory design requirements for new buildings frequently used by seniors, such as wider doorways and slip-resistant surfaces. Additionally, the proposals include incentives for developers to incorporate elderly-friendly facilities. With projections indicating that the elderly population will significantly increase in the coming years, the government recognizes the need to create a more accessible environment to combat issues like mobility challenges and social isolation. However, the implementation of these proposals may take time, prompting calls for immediate technological solutions to enhance elderly welfare. Lastly, the South China Morning Post discusses the alarming decline in the number of Hong Kong students enrolling in U.S. universities, which has dropped below 3,000 for the first time in over half a century. Factors contributing to this trend include the high cost of education in the U.S. and the emergence of more appealing immigration routes in countries like the U.K., Canada, and Australia. The article notes that restrictive immigration policies under Trump's administration may further discourage Hong Kong students from pursuing higher education in the U.S. As local tertiary institutions offer more options, parents are increasingly favoring alternatives that provide more favorable immigration pathways, leading to a significant decrease in interest in U.S. education among Hong Kong students.
Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 dobriefcom Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email. Morning sunlight on the street City whispers soft and sweet Faces mix in daily grind Every story intertwined Cultures blend like colors bright Languages in the silent night On the table stories told Food and feast upon so old People living day by day In the heart they find their way Sharing moments, voices sing In this world of everything Society So